Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. It is Wednesday, so it's a product review video. Um, before I start today, I want to thank the people that have subscribed. I broke 5,000 subscribers, which I really never thought would happen. So thank you for all that have subscribed. For those that are wondering, hey, this isn't the sniper versus car video. No, that's usually on Friday when I do my racing stuff. And that's when that one will happen. It's got a lot of editing to put stuff together. But that video is going to be pretty interesting because I also tried something else. But you have to watch the video to see it. But anyway, this is for you Ford guys. Um, it's been a while. If you've watched some of my previous videos, you would have saw me do the baseline test for this head. This is, let me go to the side here. This is the Trick Pro 240cc CNC ported head. I have then ported it beyond what that one was stock. And I'll have flow numbers to go with this too. So that's what it started out as, and I have since ported it since then. And if you watched the other video, I told I really liked this head. And I have to say now, this head is the highest flowing 20 degree low port head I've had on my flow bench, either from something I've done or from anybody else has done, at least on my flow bench. It is very impressive. This is a very good head especially since I know there's probably more in it, but there's, I haven't done it. So this was the first set I've ported of these, and I'll tell you what could probably have been uh, improved for next time, I guess. Um, but let's get to it. So the chambers, which was, this is surprising. It really looks like I've done a lot of work on these, but really I haven't. On the chamber side, I did a, the valve job got, always gets done first. So it's still a 210 intake valve and a 1600 exhaust valve. One of the things I could have done to improve flow would have gone to a 2125 intake valve and maybe a shorter exhaust valve, or maybe I could have fit that in there. However, the customer sent 210 valves, so that's what I went with. However, I used my custom cutter that I used my 50 degrees on, and I've got a few. And I used one that I like the most because it went right in the chamber. This is probably the best one that's ever come right into the chamber perfectly. So that one was like magic, almost too good to be true. So first off, I altered the valve angles. Uh, it now has a 50 degree seat, which typically promotes higher lift flow, but you'll see from the um, flow sheet here in a second that the lower lift flow numbers are better as well. Okay, as far as chamber work, there really was zero done. The, it was perfect coming off here with the valve job, uh, but it did leave slight edge here. So the only, only thing I really had to do was work this side of the chamber just to get them to blend in. It's also now a 50 degree exhaust. Okay, now the bowl, I made it bigger. I'm using my pen instead of my finger. I made the bowl bigger, but it's still, I have gone way bigger on bowls before, um, but not on this head. I wanted to keep it more conservative because I had a thought and it kind of proved out. So the bowl, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you it's 210. So it's much smaller than some of the others. And I've told you before in some of the other videos, um, when you have a shorter short side, which is right through here, when this area is really short, in other words, from deck to apex, when that's shorter, you have to make the bowl bigger so that it can cross over if the port height's lower. So in other words, you just have to slow the air. Now, um, in this case, um, because it has more short side height and the, the, this has more bowl depth too. So if you go talk from here down, it's taller because this whole thing's up. Now, typically we don't want a lot of um, area up hidden here because it's kind of dead in these areas. However, it does give you more area over the short side and that kind of helps. This gives you a larger short side area itself, so it kind of moves that airspeed up, um, so it makes things kind of better. It really helps with the low lift flow numbers as well. But anyway, because it has a longer short side, I don't really need to make the bowl as big, so I wasn't gonna go super large. It's still quite a bit big, and I probably could have got another uh, one or 2% and probably got a little bit more airflow. But I didn't, because I wanted to, this, being this is the first set I've tried, I wanna see where we're at. I also want to go kind of conservative on the first one you port because you don't want to break into water and be like, oh, uh, let me get out the welder. So this is, I knew we had enough material unmeasured, so we're, we're good there. So it's 210. Next to no materials removed from here because between the, on Fords, I'm shorter this way, um, between the two intake and exhaust ports on any aftermarket head Ford heads typically, there's not a whole lot of material. This one measured at 95 thousandths right now. So I for sure didn't want to take any more off. So it looks like I have, but really all I've done is blend the valve job and then just kind of cartridge rolled on this side. So more of the bowl areas come from here. Anyway, I won't tell you what I did on the throat, but it is bigger. Um, I'll say this, if we're talking about coefficients of discharge, which is one of my other videos I've talked about, 
It's the same size valve and it moves a lot more air, so the coefficient of discharge would be better. But however, the port's bigger too. So that's not a reason why it's not, it's not the end all coefficient of discharge because this would look better, but the port's bigger. So if you're just trying to put the same head now on, say, a 360 cubic inch engine, this is not going to make, um, this head probably won't show its full potential to a much later RPM. And if you're never in there, um, you won't see it. But if you look at the coefficient of discharge, it would look much better. Anyway, that's side point. So I can already hear comments coming and I'm probably gonna ignore most of them. Anyway, so there's what I've done and through this part, okay? Uh, I'll flip it around and I'll show you just the intake side. That's the intake side. Now, as far as the pinch, which is the distance from here to here, and here to here, that area, it did grow, but not by much. And I'm gonna tell you why. I really would like to maybe get a little bit more, but the cross-sectional area in here is 2.91 right now, which is pretty good. Um, Chevy heads, conventional Chevy heads would be loving that, but they just can't get it. Um, that's quite a bit of area. I mean, it's pretty nice. But this is the problem that I have with most Ford's heads are this way, and it kind of limits you. The reason why I didn't go more aggressive on that pinch itself is because of this. Ford heads, laid right on my pin. Ford heads, what they do is they have these tubes they go through. I had, Most manufacturers have this, I hate this. What I wish they would do is this, cut all, leave that little bulge there. Hold on, let me turn off the air conditioner. I wish to leave the bulge here, obviously, for the bolt hole, but get rid of this. So in other words, and maybe just like, here, of course you can't. The reason why I say that is, well, the head would be lighter, but the biggest thing is, if I break through, so in other words, I'm doing my push rod pinch, and I'm trying to get more area, and I happen to break through, or I blister this side, on a small block Chevy head, even an LS head for that matter, I'll be like, oh man, that sucks, no big deal. And I take it to my welder, because I can weld, but not good enough for a head. Intake manifolds, yes, but heads, no. So I take it to my welder, and he's got finer pieces, and he can get in there, and he can TIG it, and then I'll grind it out. I don't use epoxy, because I know some people use epoxy repair. For those that have, it's going to come out or crack at some point. It will happen. So the good answer is if it's aluminum, go ahead and weld. The catch with the Ford heads like this, it's next to impossible. It's, I, it's not impossible, but it's much more difficult. Because what they have to do is if you break through, you'll weld here. Rain through here. Knock out your weld here. Hopefully it's fine. Do it again. The only way they could do it is to weld this side. On a Chevy, when I've seen them do it, he'll, or LS, he'll weld here on this side first. Come back and kind of wash it over on this side so everything's smooth. So whenever I go grinding this out, there's not voids. And this one's going to be way more of a pain. So because of that, I am very conservative on Ford heads when they're like this because I don't want to go through. So I'm going to fix it properly. I'm not going to leave it halfway. And I don't want to do that. So, but anyway, it's still got, that's a massive amount of area, 2.91. Um, that's, I mean, massive for a 20 degree head. So let me get a flashlight and I can show you down the intake ports. So you get a better look at that. And I'll show you the flow numbers too. Oh, my flashlight's going to die. Okay, this is looking down the intake port. And you can see the short side's been redone. He leaves, I'm gonna grab my pen. I say he, because I think it's Brian Tooley who designs this one. He leaves a lot of corner radius, like a huge amount, but it's so much that it's taken up area. So of course I take some of this out, move the, the because the bowl's larger, I'll make it bigger on this side too, over the short side, so this way it's wider and blending into the bowl. And this way it also gives more area there, and that also helps flow. This side, like I said, it's not much change because this is the side we're next to the exhaust, so it's not really moved over much. Um, but of course I did drop down the short side height just a little, I'm favoring more on that side. And that's what it's done there. On the exhaust side, let me show you that one real quick before we go to our flow numbers and get done with this thing. On the exhaust side, let me flip the head around. On the exhaust side, what I've done is, um, I've made the throats bigger, of course. It's a 50 degree valve job, I want the throats bigger. Uh, if you watch my video about reversion, having the throats bigger actually kind of helps that. 
anyway, um, helps reversion anyway, because it knocks off some of the angles so it flows um, better this way than that way, which helps with reversion. Anyway, again, I will take nothing out of this. It looks like I have, but all it's really done is blending the off job and cartridge rolled on this side because remember I said 95 thousandths. Um, this side is where I'll open up some, and I didn't take off a whole lot of exhaust because the exhaust port for the most part is pretty good. Open up more here, and, and then on this angle, all right again. I'm just gonna set this down gentle. Yeah, there we go. This is the exhaust port, but I'll take. Yeah, where I'm at. Yeah, take more from this side, and then you can kind of see what's done with the short side itself. It's pretty good there, but from the CNC machine, he leaves like a slight ledge here. So this gets more down on this side. So this side's high, of course, because you haven't touched it. This side's moved over. So it's ground more on that side and lower down here so it comes out better. But anyway, that's it. Not a whole lot of material moved from the exhaust straight up. So, I mean, very little. But anyway, that's it. So let's look at the flow numbers. And I've got before and after. Okay. This is from the Sanyaz. So this is Sanyaz Flow Bench, and I've got the ones from the Superflow because that's about the, woo. But anyway, um, 4155 bore and no exhaust pipe. So this cylinder one is what it flowed stock. With the valves that came, everything, stock. So if, remember the numbers I care really, I really like are the four number, 400 lift, 600 and one. And you're like, why is it missing? Well the valve was hitting the um, seal, so couldn't go any further. But, so it, it might have kept flowing. We'll pretend they went 330, but I couldn't tell because it, like I said, it hit the seal. But if I look at 400, it was 267. After porting, 282. That's a great number there. The 400 number is stout. That's, just to give you an idea, that's five CFM less than the Headhunter that I've ported. That, that's a good number. Really good, especially for the size of valve. And look, when I talk about 50 degree valve seats and people think it loses low lift, it can, but if you do it right, it won't. It's like it was meant for this chamber. Um, it did lose a little one, don't care. At 200, it's gained, and then almost 15 CFM at three. But anyway, I really care about the four, which is terrific. And then let's look at six. We went from 315 to almost 340. That's a huge gain, 25. 25 CFM, that's a big gain. Now, this doesn't have a one inch, because like I said, it's hitting the seal, but you went from the peak one it was at, 324 to 343, almost 20 CFM, and it climbs all the way to 348.5. Now, someone will say, well, look, you had a little drop. I do at 700, and I think it's more in the line because that's where the spark plug's slightly in the way, or it's just something there. Because the port itself is pretty stable, and I tested more on the Superflow. Now let's look at the exhaust. Now I do actually expect this to lose some flow because of the 50 degree valve job, especially in the lower lifts, but it gained anyway. So it lost at 100, but a tenth of an inch, I should say. Gained at two, and let's go got four. 187 to 192, great number pick up there. 600, 224 to 233, not a huge gain, but it is gain. And you look at your peak number at 233 to 248. So. I mean, actually down here is a peak, but whatever. Remember, this is all without exhaust pipe, both of them. So that's, that looks pretty good, <laughs> but he ain't seen nothing yet. That just shows the difference between stock and ported. Now I did the same thing. I even kept the clay the same. I actually mold them and then set them. So they're used in the same way twice. So that's not that, they're the exact same. All I did was take this head off after I got done porting it and put it over my Superflow and to get me my, I feel good numbers because you're about to see them and they, they're pretty good. This is from the Superflow. Same bore, 4155, no exhaust pipe. Let's look at our 400 number. 284 or 285 on the Superflow. Look at the 600. 347.5, almost 348 CFM, 100 lift, 367 CFM. The Superflow has this thing reading much higher than it does on the Sanyaz. And don't ask me why. Both are calibrated correctly. I'm going to hear that over and over. They're right on. Even that, I could even pull out the plate that came with both flow winches. They're exact on. It just, they read different. 
and the super flow is higher. So anyway, um, good numbers there. You can see the exhaust numbers as well. Now the exhaust did read a little bit lower than the Sanyas, because if we look at 400, 190.7 to a 191.8, not that much. A four hundred peak lift two forty five to a two fifty one. So it reads lower on the exhaust, but much higher on the in, intake. But most people put their numbers out come from a Superflow six hundred, which is just a seven fifty with less motors and no motor controller, and it's an older design. As far as the benches, they're exactly the same, just different motors, really. Most people put out Superflow numbers. That's this. Now you're like, what is this? Three seventy point five. This is just a uh, look. I'm gonna. We got a show off here. Um, I actually did it because I wanted to see if it keep flowing, but <laughs> one inch is already getting up there. It's just telling you if the port's stable. 1.1, 1 .1, you're just doing it. You're just doing it for yourself. Um, so I guess I could say this head flows 371, but uh, really it's 367. But anyway, thanks for watching. You guys take care and look for the video on Friday about the sniper.